Alright, 1.1 Linear Systems and Graphing Lines. What we're looking at here is a linear system is basically two or more linear equations that are considered at the same time. With that, I want you to look at back at last night's homework where I gave you some additional questions that involve streets. What were the connections that you found with the streets involved? Hopefully, you've asked your parents, you've consulted maps, or asked family friends to help you with this question. The reason why is to generate some conversation of how math is related to everyday, your everyday life. Looking at these examples, let's look at the one that's closest by the school, Joymar and Thomas Street. What is the connection that Jormar Drive and Thomas Drive have with each other? Well, if you know, you should know that Jormar Drive and Thomas Street actually intersect. They intersect at one time. Another pair that does the exact same thing would, is Britannia Road and Winston Churchill Boulevard. Those two intersect once. So you have two pairs of streets that intersect once. Now let's look at Credit View and Airmouse Parkway. How do they relate to each other? Well, Credit View and Airmouse Parkway, both each of them both run north and south. So what happens there is that those streets will never intersect. They do not intersect. Dundas Street and Burnthorpe Road are also two streets that do not intersect. So let's look at McDonough Cartier Freeway and Highway 401. How are those two, those pair, that pair of streets uh, relate to each other? Well, hopefully you've done some research and realized that McDonough Cartier Freeway is actually another name for Highway 401. They're essentially the same street, so those two will always intersect. Another pair would be here Ontario Street and Highway 10. Both of those also are the same street and therefore they have an infinite number of intersection points. So we have three unique different pairs of streets that signify how uh, the importance of how lines and, and everyday life collide. So these streets can be connected to lines in the, in the following way. For example, two parallel streets will never intersect. How does that relate to lines? Well, two parallel lines will also never intersect. So therefore, there are no intersection points. But let's think about linear relationships and how they will apply. So if I have one line and I take that same line and I create another one. All right, let's do that again. Sorry, let's do that again. You take one line exactly like this, and I grab it. Sorry. And I have two lines exactly like that. Those two lines are parallel. What makes them parallel, you would ask, well, these two lines both run in the same direction. Because they run in the same direction, they must have something in common. And that would be their slopes. So they would essentially have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. Okay, and that's important. So let's look at the next question. Two streets that intersect have a special relationship with each with lines in the sense that there are two lines that intersect will always have one intersection point. Now what is the special relationship with two lines that intersect? Well folks, two lines that intersect, when you think about it, drawing one line and then you draw another line where they intersect, what happens is the two lines will intersect. What can you tell me about the individual lines? Well, they will have different slopes. 
that implies directly that those lines will automatically intersect. Now some of you are going, but what it miss? What about if you have a question like this and another line going like this? They don't really intersect. Well, don't forget the lines run infinitely in the direction that they're traveling in both ends. So therefore, what you would have to be able to do is literally extend that line. So I would take this red line and extend it further, and guess what? The lines will intersect. So they have different slopes, and because they have different slopes, it's guaranteed that there will be at least one, there will be, sorry, one intersection point. All right, now two streets that have the exact same, uh, 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 for example, a different name, but the same, but are implied that they're the exact same street, well, the same can apply to it linear equations. Linear equations of this type will look different. For example, one could be in slope-intercept form, the other one can be in standard form, but then when you put them both in the same form, they'll have the exact same equation. So, two lines that co are coincident. So they are collinear. They uh, it's one line on top of the other line, literally one on top of the other, and they're known as coincident lines. So it's a coincidence they have different names, but they're exactly the same street. So how are those related? Well, folks, it's essentially the same line, so they must have this uh, an infinite number of intersection points, and that means that they must have the same slope, and the same y intersect. So this is the three different unique relationships that lines can have with each other. Essentially, a point of intersection is basically a point where the two lines cross, also known as a solution to a linear system. So when I ask you for a solution to a linear system, I'm asking you for the point of intersection. All right. Let's look at example number one. Example number one, write the following as a mathematical expression or equation. So we have expressions and equations to do with the following. Part A is an expression, and part B and C are going to be equations. Part A says 10 decreased by a number. Part B says half of a value increased by 3 is 8. And finally, part C says daily earnings of $120 plus 15% commission on sales. What does this all mean? Well, we need to create either an equation or expression, depending on what it is, to match the following statement. All right, let's look at the first one. 10 decreased by number 10 minus x. What we would do is let x represent a number. So x represents a number, and that's what you would write as a statement in the very beginning. Let x represent a number, and then we write the equation. Done. Don't forget the let statement, folks. Part B. Half of a value increased by 3 is 8. So you can write this equation two different ways. Half x plus 3 equals 8, or x divided by 2 plus 3 is equal to 8. Both of these are acceptable. Both would get you full marks. It just depends on preference here, folks. And why they're the same? Don't forget that this is kind of like a multiplication of two fractions. x would be the fraction of x over 1. So be 1 times x over 2 times 1, and that's how you get x over 2. All right, but you definitely would need a let statement again. And what would the let statement be? Well, in this case, it would be let x represent a value, because that's what's in the question. Part C, it says daily earnings of $120 plus 15% commission on sales. So here, this is unique because not only is it an equation, you actually have two variables here. So we need to represent the variables. So the equation is the easy part. E equals 120 plus 0.15c. So again, its earnings is equal to $120 plus 15%. Don't forget it's 15%, so we put the decimal, 1,5 of c. So we let E represent the uh, daily earnings, and let C represent the com sales commission. And once we do that, we can find our information now that we have a formula. All right, let's look at the next question. Example number two, the equations of two lines are given. Here are the two equations, 
and you're asked to find the point of intersection graphically using the intercept method. So here's our graph. What we're going to do is take the first one, x minus y is equal to negative 1, and we're going to find the x and y intercept for that. The x intercept is going to be x equals negative 1. Why? Well, anything that crosses the x-axis, so basically anything along this axis here, means that the y must be 0. So I'm going to cover up the y with the hand so you can see that the y disappeared, and you have x is equal to negative 1. Now, you want to find the y-intercept, so we find the y-intercept, and you find out that it's negative y is equal to negative 1, which means y is equal to 1. Why is that the case? Well, looking here, I cover up the x, because don't forget, anything that crosses the y-axis means that x is 0, so x disappears, and you have negative y is equal to negative 1, that means y is equal to 1. So what we can do now is plot the points. We plot negative 1 for x, 1 for y, draw our line, and that is the equation x minus y is equal to negative 1. We draw the next line. So to do that, we take the equation and find the x and y intercept. The x intercept is 2x is equal to 2, x is equal to 1. Keep in mind that we're trying to make the y disappear, so this part disappears. We get 2x is equal to 2. And that means x is equal to 1. And then we find the y-intercept by covering the x. Just as such, we get negative y is equal to 2. That means y is equal to negative 2. What do we have here, folks? Well, we can now plot our x and y-intercepts. Here they are. And we draw our line. And lo and behold, these two lines seem to like each other and intersect. Well, that point that they intersect at is called the point of intersection point of intersection in this question is following the x would be 3 and then the following the y would be 4 and folks the point of intersection for this question is 3 4 all right I don't have enough time to continue on this video so I'd like you to move over to the other video the second video of this lesson and we'll see you on the other side folks take care